In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Helen was clothed with the right robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all her sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? May be seated as we sing 770, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Helen and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3. To everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck, pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle reading is from <clears throat> Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8. Very poignant one here, as we see that nothing separates us from God's love. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This also is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus is the firstborn of the dead. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. <coughs> the 
These words are Jesus speaking to his disciples, telling them of his impending death and <coughs> resurrection. And many of them were worried. And he said, Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. Our, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing hymn 801, How Great Thou Art.
God commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, verse 9. Dear friends in Christ, just so happens that was Helen's confirmation verse. We have a little tradition in our church that when a person is confirmed, whether as a child about the age of 14 or as an adult, like your mother, your grandmother, your aunt, we give them a confirmation verse. That's a special verse chosen by the pastor to help guide and speak to that individual all the days of their life. And the pastor who confirmed her chose Joshua 1.9. And I think he chose well. It was chosen well for Helen Catherine Schweitzer, a.k.a. the lunch lady. That's who she was, right? Yeah. A lunch lady. Also a quiet, unassuming lady who lived an extraordinarily busy life, whether it was serving up the little ones at our elementary school for, what, 20 years? That's enough to drive anybody to an early grave almost, I would think. Because I remember that would have been about the time I was in elementary school when she was doing that. And I would have been one of those that, uh, could I have more? <laughs> and if it was her cooking, I would have asked for more. And of course, she worked at Shirley's table. And one thing I didn't know, at the Yukon Infirmary. I'm wondering how many of those kids in the Yukon Infirmary are really sick or who pretended to be sick just so they could get her cooking. You know what I'm saying? Hey, wouldn't have blamed them. Then, in her spare time, folks, she gardened, watched the Red Sox play baseball, living long enough to actually see the Red Sox win the World Series. Now, that's an accomplishment. You know what I'm saying? That's like my grandma seeing people walk on the moon. In fact, I think that was a little bit bigger of a deal because of how long the Sox had gone empty-handed. And then, of course, watching the uh, Yukon men and boys, or men and girls playing baseball. Oh, excuse me, men and ladies. I was corrected by a person on that once. Playing basketball and winning probably more tournament, you know, taking the national title. Definitely when both the guys and the gals took the title. I don't think that's going to be surpassed, and she got to watch it. God bless her. And uh, <clears throat> in her meantime, she created a cookbook, which I believe daughter Marie is taking orders for that cookbook on sale in the narthex after. No, no, I'm just kidding you. But I did look at the cookbook last night, and it's intriguing. I already told her I want a copy, especially that savory mushroom and barley soup. Oh, that sounds just absolutely fantastic. But I'm not kidding when I say that this incredibly busy woman found her greatest joy in the simple things of life. Her family, her friends, cooking, gardening. I was recently at a funeral where the pastor droned on about how this woman had visited Paris and most of Europe and most of the U.S. and other points in the world. And I'm thinking to myself, Helen was thrilled to death to get in the golf cart that Mike got and drive around her property looking at how they planted the garden for the upcoming wedding, right? Yeah. She, she probably got a bigger kick out of that than this lady who traveled all over the world. Simple things. Simple things.
These are just a few of the things that the family and friends already know. Oh, and I forgot. I almost forgot. Uh, teaching Lyman students how to grate eggs. Did she use a candle or was it an actual light? Okay, not quite that far back. Having interviewed with uh, Mary Lou Beckwith, I guess, about, because they have a great big thing now with uh, Lyman Memorial High School. And uh, I guess, according to Marie, she was absolutely thrilled that her senior class was the very first one here in town that got to go visit Washington, D.C. How about that? That's probably her first time outside of New England, wasn't it? Or even Connecticut? Okay. Wow. Wow, amazing. So that's just a few of the things that uh, you guys already know and probably know a lot more than I do, even though I've known her for almost 40 years now. Because I've been around that long. Amazing. I see and know that plus a few more things from the text, which is the confirmation verse I said given to her many years ago. These words were spoken by God to a young guy named Joshua who had some big shoes to fill. Most of you are probably familiar with a guy named Moses. You know, let my people go, Moses. Well, Joshua was one of Moses' colleagues at that time much younger than Moses, so he had been with Moses the whole trip from Egypt in slavery, traveled with him for 40 years through the Sinai. Moses was a, a typical guy, never stopped and asked for directions. But God wanted him to be out there in that Sinai desert because there were rebellious people he needed to have taken care of, and then the new folks were ready to go. And here's Joshua standing on the bank of the Jordan River, ready to go over. Moses had just died. God told him that he was gone. But it's now his job to lead these people, to lead them into the nation, well, the, the state of what became Israel, but was at that time owned by guys like Canaanites, Perizzites, Hibusites, they sound like infections, don't they? All the ites. And their job was to take them on one by one and defeat them because that land belonged to them. Theirs was the promised land. And here God is building them up and encouraging him and saying to him, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God told Joshua, be strong and courageous, not frightened, not dismayed because I'm going to be with you. Well, Helen faced many daunting tasks and trials in her own life. The loss of two children. The loss of her husband of 53 years and even towards the end of her life, her own deteriorating health. It was daunting. And folks, I know a lot of folks who will stay home just because they stubbed their toe. And yet there were times when this, this lady could barely move and guess where she was? Parked in her favorite spot. Diane, you're sitting in her favorite spot back there. And she would park her, her walker back there. I had a dickens of time getting around that thing at times, giving her communion, but uh, that was her favorite spot. And she was here. These are the things that might cripple many, and yet she faced life with a strength and courage not often found these days. And despite not feeling the best, she, as I said, was here and was happy to be with her friends and her family being around, baking her strudels 
And by the way, if you haven't seen the picture yet, take a look at it. She has a strudel that's as big as a kitchen, as the kitchen, well, no, not just a kitchen table, but I mean, it's big. It's huge. Baking these things and making her, and we got it fixed, by the way. I'm going to share with you. Um, a sharp-eyed member of the family spotted the original uh, bulletin cover that my wife made. She hadn't, she had given it to me to uh, uh, proofread it, and uh, it was brought up. My wife typed devil eggs. I could just imagine heaven, uh, Helen chuckling about that one, about little eggs with their horns sticking out. Of course, Marie probably thought that because she was so thoughtful about the picnic that we had planned the day that she went to be home with Jesus, and she wanted to make sure that she made four dozen eggs, which deviled eggs come in halves. So that's eight dozen deviled eggs. And she supervised you, didn't she, Marie? She wanted to make sure every one of those deviled eggs, not a devil egg, but a deviled egg, made it because she knew how many people enjoyed them and how long they had gone without one, and they enjoyed them, didn't she? Devil eggs. I love it. That's the heart of a Martha my wife even said of her, she had a Martha's heart. And people ask, what does that mean? Well, some of you may remember the story of Mary and Martha. And Mary sat down at the feet of Jesus, okay, listening to what Jesus was saying. And Martha's in the kitchen. Martha, a.k.a. Helen, is in the kitchen, you know, doing all this stuff, making all the food, and finally she comes out and says, Lord, don't you care that I'm doing this all by myself? And of course, Jesus, not in a nasty way, but he says, she's chosen a better portion. But people still eat, don't they? And that's the Martha heart, the heart of wanting to serve one another, to be there for one another, even and especially in such simple things as making deviled eggs or strudel. <sighs> I know her strength was found in the fact that she knew God was with her. And I pray that each and every one of you here who finds their heart has a little empty spot in it finds that same strength, that same courage, knowing that God was with her literally every step of the way, even as he picked her up and laid her down so peacefully in her kitchen in a way that no one has ever seen before. We're still marveling about that at rest with Jesus as he took her home. God is still with her. God has her in his arms in heaven where she will wait happily making angel eggs and perhaps her strudel when we join her in Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and our minds. In Jesus our Lord, unto life everlasting. Amen. Please remain seated for the prayer of the church. Please turn to the middle of the bulletin with me as we pray together. Let us pray to the Lord our God and Father who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, Almighty God you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him to the, through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption, to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, give to the family of Helen and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care that, casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love, who have departed in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe in and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Receive our thanks for Helen and for all the blessings you bestowed on her in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home, that with her we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give thanks to you that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Lord, I am the I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flocks into your arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with the certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his eternal peace. Amen. Amen. I'd like to just quickly do a quick announcement about, it looks like the weather has cleared up a little bit. We were going to uh,
try and caution people about trying to get, because we were supposed to have really nasty weather, but uh, just watch the weather as we're going down there, because we want everybody to come back safe and sound for the reception following the internment. We close and continue with hymn number 656, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
I guess I may as well read the obituary while we wait for Aurora McCarthy. Helen Catherine Schweitzer, 92, of Lebanon, passed away peacefully at home on Sunday, June 6, 2021. Born November 29, 1928, in Lebanon, she was the daughter of the late Stephen and Anna Kersnick. Helen graduated Lyman Memorial High School in 1946. In 1948, she married her husband, the late Adolf Schweitzer. They shared 53 years of marriage together until he predeceased her in 2001. Helen was known for her culinary expertise. She worked for 20 years as a head cook in the cafeteria of Lebanon Elementary School and for several years at Shirley's Table Restaurant in South Windham. She later went on to work for 15 years at the Yukon Infirmary, preparing food for the students in need. She also had a love for gardening and worked at the Liberty Hill Farm greenhouses for many years. Helen led a Christian life and attended re the Redeemer Lutheran Church in Lebanon for many years. In her spare time, excuse me, yeah, in her spare time, she enjoyed gardening, watching her favorite teams, the Boston Red Sox and the men and women's Yukon basketball teams. However, her greatest joy in life came from her family. That's you. She took great pride in spending time with her family, teaching them about gardening and cooking. She especially loved to bake with them, passing down the way to prepare many cherished family recipes. She's survived by her daughter, Lorraine Schweitzer, daughter, Marie Reynolds, and her partner, Michael Okanut, grandson, Mark Reynolds, and his wife, Jackie, and their children, Lara, Jason, and Samantha Reynolds, granddaughter, Julie Magnet, Mangan, and her husband, James, and their daughter, Jillian Mangan, daughter-in-law, Nancy Schweitzer, grandson, Jared Schweitzer, and his wife, Elizabeth Ferguson, grandson, Joshua Schweitzer, and her partner, Sarah Zagan and partner Sarah Zagan, and their daughter Kaylee Schweitzer and numerous other extended family and friends. In addition to her parents and husband, she is predeceased by her daughter Kathleen, son Albert, and her brothers Stephen, Joseph, Kalman, and Emil Kersnick. Rest in peace.